Welcome back to my channel. This is the Yashica Electro GTN camera, often referred to as the poor man's Leica, or the Spider-Man's camera, as it appeared in the 2012 movie Spider-Man. The Yashica Electro was introduced in 1966, and it was a popular camera amongst enthusiasts. Unfortunately, it was discontinued in 1978. In 1968, Yashica launched the Electro 35G, and then a year later in 1969, they came out with the GT. And alongside that was the GS, difference being one was silver, one was black. And in 1973, Yashica launched their last models, which was this one and also the GSN, the difference between the GSN and the GTN. This one's black, the other one's silver. And I came across this one one night when I was playing snooker with my mate Andy. He walks in with his cue in his hand, ready to thrash me at snooker. And he gave me this camera and he said, look, I've got a camera, I found it in the loft. He said it was my dad's. He said, you can have it if you want. I said, great. I didn't really know too much about it or what it was um, until I started researching it. So suddenly it came to a point when the camera failed on me. I did replace the batteries, but the light meter still wasn't working inside. Um, however, I can still shoot it at around about one five hundredth of a second without no light meter, without no battery inside. So that's what I'm going to try and do today is shoot this Yashica uh, Electro 35 GTN with a roll of HP5. It's quite a nice day, so I should be able to work with the Sunny 16 rule. So I'll just start off with showing you around the camera a little bit. Let's look at the lens. It's a very sharp lens. It's a 45 millimeter lens. And on the lens, you've got uh, F 1.7 all the way to F16. You've also got your focusing on the lens as well. Now this is a range finder camera. So you look through the, the viewfinder and you get your parallels together and then you should be in focus to take your shot. I'm not gonna use it like that today. I'm gonna use the uh, zone metering, if you like, on the, on the lens itself. So kind of get my distances right and then just keep shooting. So if, especially if I'm shooting F8, F16 outside, um, I shouldn't have any problem doing that. Um, also on the lens, you've got an auto mode and you've got a bulb mode as well for doing the long exposures and you've got a flash sync mode as well. If you want to use a flash, there's a sync port right on there. On the top of the camera, you've got your ASA or ISO or film selector there, which will obviously control the light meter if it worked. And these two little um, indicators here are your overexposure and your underexposure. So it kind of tells you if you're overexposed or underexposed when you're taking a shot. They also appear inside the viewfinder. And it's also got a funky little timer as well, all mechanical. So the timer will work without the battery. And when you select your ASA on top of the camera, it's not electrical. It doesn't work for electrical circuits. It's got this little tiny diaphragm here, this little like two blade aperture on the light sensor uh, screen there which opens and closes so that's um, pretty cool I haven't seen that before on any other camera so uh, it's a great bit of kit it's a sharp lens it shouldn't let me down let's go and shoot it before I carry on don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you get a notification next time I post a video cheers So I've decided to come down to an old industrial estate and have a little shoot up around here, you know, some real rough looking stuff about. Um, I'm going to be developing this HP5 in Rodnell, so it'll make it even more rough around the edges. And I'm going to start off over here with these old tyres. I'm shooting the Sunny 16 rule. It ain't that bright, so I'm probably going to be kind of F11 outside. And then when I get into sort of shady stuff, maybe come down to 5.6. See how it goes, see what happens. Check this out, an old Rolls Royce behind this fence here. I don't know what the yard this is, but there's a load of old city cars in there, like this classic 1970s Rolls Royce. See if we can get a shot through there. I'd love to get the keys for this. Give it a go. You know, some of you might think, well, what a waste of film running around a place like this, but you know, one day this will be gone, all this stuff, and uh, I'll always have the negatives to keep. But mainly, just trying to see if this uh, Yashica still works without the battery inside and, and how it gets on. And I'm shooting film, which I enjoy. So, I got a little bit bored <laughs> over the um, industrial estate. There's lots of cars and lots of traffic in and out, so um, probably best if I'd gone there on a Sunday maybe, there was less people working, so I could have got more shots in without cars. 
and big ass lorries. But I'm in a field now with one of my fears, which is cattle. I've just seen these Highland cows. I'm gonna walk over, see if I can get a shot of these Highland cows. <laughs> give up with the cows. I don't want to go near them. <laughs> so I've come around a chicken shit way. I've come to the back. They're right there, but there's no opening for me to get a picture. If he doesn't run, he's in the shade. So I'm going to have to go to about F4. Hopefully I can get the shot I want. Don't know why I'm blowing kisses. Ain't a dog, is it? See if he looks at me. No, he's looking away. Little sod. Just gives a smile. I'll take that one. Now he's looking at me. Oh, now he's looked away. <coughs> ah, stinging nettles now. Oh, he's coming over. Hello, fella. How oh, lucky am I? Yeah, you're giving it large now, aren't you? Hey? Yeah, awesome. I don't know if F4 is going to be good enough. Let's go to F2.8. I'm in trouble with the lighting. Oh. <laughs> He's just staring at me. He's right in the shade. The others are in the light. Just in the shade here. I'll try and get one more. 1.7. Let's see how crazy that looks. I'll get my focus in. I'm using the range finder. <laughs> it's a beauty, isn't it? Right, let's walk down a village, see what I can get down here. So that's it, I've just come to the end. So that's it, I've just come to the end of the roll. And uh, I only had about 20 odd shots in here. I've already used some of this HP5 on another shoot in another camera. Um, but I've come to the end of the roll now. So I've got a little bit of the industrial estate, a little bit of the cows, and a little bit of the local school hall. And I just want to see if it's true I can still shoot this um, electro at what, 1 500th of a second I've read online. So let's get back. We'll dump this in rod and all the film. Um, probably. I don't know, something like one part to 50. Develop the film and see what I can do in the darkroom, see if I've got anything worth printing. Right, I'm in my darkroom now, so I'm about to develop my film. This is, it's actually R09 one shot, it's called, um, but it's Rodnor, it's the same bloody thing. So I'm just gonna, whoop, mix up 400 mil for my development. Uh, 400, divided by 50, so I'm gonna go one part to 50, it says eight mil. So let's put more water in first, and then stick three, six, we'll stick nine in between eight and 10. So I've got development, stop, and fix us. My development, there's me stop, there's me fix. There's me tank with me film inside. Timer set to 11 minutes. Pull the developer in. That'll completely cover that film, lovely jubbly. Start the timer, agitate five times for the first initial minute. And I'll do that on the minute every minute. So I let the negatives dry and it's now the next day. I've, you see I've cut the negatives up, put them into my sleeve here. I've managed to get 18 shots out of the rest of that HP5 um, and the next look all right. I did post a image of the camera on Instagram and on Facebook and I've got some interesting comments. I'll just read you some of those out before I get in the dark room and make a couple of prints. My nephew Tidderman called me a geek. <laughs> that mate, when you turn up at Christmas. Clive Holland says it's such a beautiful camera and delivers very nice results. He loves the contrasty viewfinder. I can vouch for that. And Drunk Darkroom says, hey Roger, if you put it on flash setting, the shutter will fire at 1 30th of a second, or at least my GSN model will. I believe this is the same as the GSN, 
and I've tried that and it doesn't. It's still um, firing at one, probably one five hundredth of a second. It's certainly not one thirtieth. John Milner says, uh, I use the Sunny 16 rule with these old cameras. It rarely fails once you use it enough. What's well, true, exactly what I was doing um, on this shoot using the Sunny 16 rule. Apart from when I got to the, the Highland Cows, you know, I had to come down to sort of 2.8. It was quite a shady area. Getting back to my light meter issues, Toxins BMW says, cables corrode is a common problem uh, fixed in short time if you can solder. I can't solder, and even if I did, I'd, I'd probably ruin the camera, so I'm not going to try that. And I have tried putting batteries in. I've even tried a, a battery compartment as well that I got, put it in there, and it still didn't work. So I believe that the electrics uh, in this camera are completely shot. <laughs> Nicholas Fanzo says, screw light meters, blast away. That's pretty much what I did. So I flick over to my Facebook page, and there's a couple of interesting comments here. My nephew starts off with geek. Rona Marie says, have you checked the battery compartment for any oxidation? Well, I know that it's not a problem with the battery compartments or the batteries. I know that the problem is definitely inside somewhere. Um, and he also says about the, the lenses <laughs> causing radiation. Um, he says, be careful, don't sleep with it. I did sleep with my Mir 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 RZ when I got that, but uh, the wife got a bit jealous, so that one went out the window. And as for radiation, oh. <coughs> Sounds weird. And Eris Alar says, I bought one of these months ago, but I've not used it yet. I look forward to seeing how you get on. No, you go and shoot yours. Don't wait for me. It's a blinding bit of kit. Just go and have fun with it. Go and shoot it. Anyway, um, so yeah, great. Thanks for the comments on Instagram and Facebook. Um, it's definitely a problem inside. So, um, but you know, it's a great camera to shoot. Let's get in the darkroom and see what these negs look like on paper. These are the HP5 negatives, which were developed in Rodno, one part to 50. I've got quite a bit of grain on them, not too much but there is um, some noticeable grain, which there would be. Rodnell's quite a, a, a hard developer. Let's come down here. I like the Rolls-Royce one. I do like, I'm gonna print that. And I might have a go at one of the Highland cows. Either the one that I th sort of felt was a bit silhouetted, or maybe the one looking straight at me. I might have a go at this one here. So uh, let's have a go at the Rolls-Royce first, see if we can do anything with that. So there's the Rolls-Royce negative on the baseboard. You can see there's not much clarity on the on the on the baseboard with the negative. So it's kind of a little bit um, I'd say underexposed. When it was in shade, I'm at 500 with a 400 speed film shooting a uh, Sunny 16 rule. Um, but this Rolls-Royce was in shade, so I was kind of clutching at straws if I'd get it right. But I'm still going to try and see if I can make a print because I quite like it. So let's get a quick focus on it. Let's have a look at that grain. It's definitely there, but not as bad as I thought. But they are, like I said, rough looking images. That's why I banged it out in Rodno. I thought I was gonna shoot the whole roll on that industrial state, you know, make it look a bit um, grungy, but um, end up shooting cows. Let's do a quick test strip on this. So I'm gonna use contrast filters. I'm gonna put a two and a half grade in and just bring the aperture to 5.6. I'll do a test strip of two seconds. I'm using Ilford's multi-grade um, Deluxe glossy paper. It's only a 10 by eight paper. Let's do a test strip over it. This might be a bit tricky, this print. Two, four. Well, there's my test strip, and I'm hardly tickling any contrast at all. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, and 14. Uh, 14 seconds. Let's put one on at um, 20 seconds, see what we can do with that. So I'm just going to clutch straws at 20 seconds, see if I can build anything up. I might have to end up with a contrast five. So that's a two and a half grade filter at 20 seconds. Just starting to look a little bit muddy. So I'm gonna try and pull the contrast out. I'm gonna go straight for a contrast five and uh, see what that can do. I'm not gonna bother split toning. I'm just gonna go straight into contrast five, see if we can build those blacks up. So I'm do away with a two and a half. Contrast five, in it goes. Another test strip. I'm not going to bother with um, 
increments. I'm just going to go straight across the headlights, 20 seconds, with contrast 5, see what that gives me, and then work it out from there. So this is me contrast five at 20 seconds, two and a half grade filter, 20 seconds, contrast five at 20 seconds. It's given me a better separation. I can certainly see uh, more, not detail, but the headlamp seems to be popping a bit more. The only thing that's gonna worry me is these chromey parts are now pretty much the same color as the white of the paper, um, which I might have to just use a bit of contrast, for, uh, contrast zero, low contrast filter to try and build these up. Um, at the same time, try and, uh, um, dodge the headlamp because I don't want that to get any darker. So uh, let's whack a full size piece of paper in and see what that contrast five is giving me across the rest of the print. So we'll put a full sheet of 10 by 8 in and see how that looks. And guys I'm not looking for masterpieces here, I'm just seeing if that camera can shoot like I've read at uh, one five hundredth of a second and at the same time having a little fun experience and a play in the darkroom. Let's see what this looks like. There she goes. I'm expecting the, the bonnet of the car and the chrome to be a bit crazy. In fact, the fence, it looks quite cool with the way the fence is. It's looking really grungy. That don't look too bad. It looks quite arty. An old beaten up Rolls Royce behind a fence. It looks like it's in a in a junkyard and all this rusty stuff going on here. Um, but I've re um, I've readjusted the the crop on underneath the enlarger because I've got a bit more room up here to get the bonnet in. So I've just done that. And by looking at this in here, uh, looks like I'm, I'm getting some highlight going on on the bonnet. So I'll just have to quick, do a quick test on that and see um, how that bonnet's going to look. I don't want to waste any more 10 by 8. Hopefully the next one's going to be the print that I'm going to be happy with. And just as I thought, this is the top of the bonnet. You can see the uh, silver chrome part of the grille there. Uh, there's some crease line, which uh, needs to go a lot blacker. But the bonnet is, if I continue with the Contrast 5, it's not going to build any of these highlights up on the bonnet. So um, I'm happy with the rest of the image apart from this. So I'm going to leave this a bit longer with the Contrast 5, and then I'm going to throw in a Contrast 0 and just burn some of this bonnet in. Let's see what happens. So we'll dig out another 10 by 8. Um, I've turned one of the red lights off in the darkroom so you guys can see. Uh, but I can barely see the uh, baseball anyway with that Contrast 5 filter in with these red lights on so uh, I'll have to do my best so let's give that our 20 seconds contrast 5 and then I'm gonna have to burst just gonna dodge the headlamp a little tiny bit Now I'm just going to use this burn card and uh, just start hit, actually I'm using my hand, sob that, uh, free hand, no timer, one, two, just try and build that crease up, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, So I've done another 20 seconds on the top of the bonnet. Just try and build that crease up. Let's swap over to a contrast zero. And hopefully that will... That's a contrast four and a half. Where's my zero gone? There it is. Hopefully that'll uh, build up the tones on that bonnet. Let's see what happens here. Same again, just freehand. One, two, three. Don't want to hit that headlight if I can help it. Oh. Eight, nine. Oh, just hit the headlight there. That shouldn't be too much though. But you see the shape I'm making with my hand. Just trying to build that bonnet up a little bit, give it some detail. And, and it goes. 
like I say, it's, it's a grungy print, you know, it's a messy print, so it doesn't have to be perfect, not in my world anyway. But as long as I can get something out of it, something that I'm happy with, and it's another bit of experience in the darkroom, you know. Most importantly, I don't want to kill the headlight. That's got to be the focus because that's going to um, give you recognition of what car it is. I couldn't get the um, the Rolls Royce, was it Silver Spur or the Lady on the bonnet because there was other cars in the background. I didn't want that, but this doesn't look too bad. Let's stop and fix it. And that's the final print there. You can see how much room I'd left um, under the enlarger, which is why I repositioned it to get more of the bonnet in uh, compared to the original one that I did here. But you can see here where I've lost detail. It's very light in this area on the bonnet where, the, um, where it was in light and shade. And using the contrast five filter, I just managed to pull that crease line back in there, give it some definition and the contrast zero just burned in the highlights at the top. And that little tiny bit of dodging I did on the um, headlight, which is quite nice. It makes that pop out. So it's quite a nice contrasty print that I've come back with um, from the Rolls Royce. And all the wire fence as well, you can see uh, in the shot, which makes it look a little bit more interesting. I think I was at 5.6 or might have been at F4. I can't remember now. I'll have to recap on the video, see what I said. And after the Rolls Royce, I decided to have a look at the cow, one of the cow shots. Um, I can't remember now. I think this might have been f4.5 or something that I shot f4 um, but I tried on this one and it was just too overexposed and then I tried again and, and tried to bring it back although the cow you know naturally it would be silhouetted if I would managed to um, expose for the sky and get some of that back the cow would have been completely silhouetted so I tried to go in between this was just with no filter and then I used a little bit of contrast 5 just to try and burn him in a little tiny bit around here as well. Uh, but it didn't quite work out, you know, you lose some, you win some. That's uh, just the way it is sometimes. So above all, all I wanted to do was see if the Electro 35 GTN that I've got uh, still works without a light meter. And it does, it still works. I don't know whether it's 1 400th or 1 500th. I've read it's 1 500th. Uh, let us know in the comments if you know for sure. Um, and also at the start of the video, I started rambling on about the, uh, the Yashica Electro 35 model in the years. It's only stuff that I've researched online. If I'm wrong, let us know also in the comments. So uh, maybe I should have stayed at the industrial estate where I, I kind of could have shot the uh, Sunny 16 rule a little bit better than um, going off down into, into the fields and the farms and uh, shooting those cows in shade but however i still had fun shooting film anyway guys hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching if you watched to the end thanks to all the guys that support me on patreon and also the youtube community channel and i'll catch you next time if you're into film photography and you want to help support the channel then why not consider becoming a patreon or join me on the youtube community members area where i upload various content on a weekly basis your support will also be helping me grow the channel and continue making videos i hope to see you there